Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. Tuesday afternoon and I've got nothing to do so we're going to have two casts today, that's right you heard me, two for Tuesday and the first one is going to be another Average Joes. That's right ladies and gentlemen, you ask for them now, they're pouring in and they won't stop. So let's head on over to the game zone because we are behind schedule and the players are already gating in and it's going to be a match on hilly plateau. The map of course needing little or no introduction but our players do as always so let's check them out up here it's going to be team one down here it's going to be team two taking a look closer at the composition up here in burgundy red going cybrin and controversially opening three mass extractors first and no factory it's unusual as far as i'm concerned it's route 2342 and finally he plonks down a factory it's going to be a land factory and uh, team member number two for team one over here is belisarius he's going pontiff white seraphim also opening first land team member number three for team one over here to the right is carl He's going Electric Blue UEF, also opening first land. And last but not least, for Team 1, we have Bramall. Get him in shot there. There we go. Camera fail. And he's going Seraphim Halliborange Orange. Looking at Team 2 down here at the bottom left is my good friend, GFY's the Pony. He's already on the move. He's going Metallic Grey Seraphim. Team member number 2 for Team 2 next to him is Fieldos in uh, Floral Violet. Not very nice of him. And uh, he's opening first land. Going to grab that hydro. All very important. Team member number three for team two next to him in mellow yellow is Koff. He's going cybering. Also opening first land. Going to get that hydro. And rolling past very handily so I don't have to go anywhere. It's Jody C321. He's going Ferrari Red Aeon. And they seem to be making a little bit of a push towards the middle at minute one and a half. Very early indeed. This must be... Um, very well orchestrated pre-prepared plan of course generally you end up with some serious action com wise going on in the middle of the map that's very usual for hilly plateau but this seems to be a very quick and early push all four commanders on their way before one minute 50 over here at the moment Carl is the only one showing any real impetus to get to the middle I suppose we've also got Bramall over to the right hand side is making a move but route 2342 is only just setting out now handling less and Belisarius is very comfortable in its current location seems to be not wanting to go anywhere for the moment he's going to get that extra little bit of build power and keep it in his base as you can see there are one or two people above the 1500 cutoff point uh, for the average joes but as always guys the way i do things um, is unconventional uh, i just take the average as you know or those of you that don't know of the ratings in the game and if the average the mean uh, works out to less than 1500 then I call it an average Joes and this as you can see it certainly does you've got a couple of players here over the boundary but most of them are well below in the 1200 range so uh, there we go lots of mass of course in the middle on hilly plateau tons of reclaim available Pony's going to be the first to get his hands on it and also going straight for an upgrade there on uh, to the left of our screen and he's pinging furiously with the assist Beacon asking uh, Fieldos to come and help him and a little bit of teamwork for these early upgrades never goes amiss always nice to get uh, a little bit of ACU assistance and of course with uh, Johnny C321 in the locale he could also help Koff making his way up there as well Johnny for the moment grabbing a few of these rocks come on Johnny help out make yourself useful boy there he goes at least he looks like that's where he's headed and you notice with these average Joes, of course, a lot less use of the move commands and then assist. They will just go point blank assist. Not necessarily the quickest way to do things. And a little bit of action happening over on the left hand side. Belisarius getting some work done with a Selen and curiously deciding not to finish off that T1 engineer when he had him. Could have grabbed him. He's going to come back, but now he's going to meet an Aurora. Oh, that was some horrible decision making. Down goes that Selen for no joy. In the meantime, Dupony's commander very nearly finished. Let's take a look. I'm going to guess it's probably going to be a gun upgrade. Too early to really make use of any T2 engineering suite. There we go. Chronoton Accelerator expects some fast rate of fire. And he's on the move towards the middle. Carl is here, but he's relatively alone. Belisarius is coming in as well. He has managed to get a T1 plasma cannon in place. That will give him some protection, but we've got three, in fact, all four maybe, of Team 2's ACUs pushing forward. 
And the pony is locked on to Carl's ACU. He's taking a lot of fire from both pony and cough. Yes, there is this plasma cannon. The pony switches up quickly to finish that off. And now it's Carl and Belisarius versus four ACUs. Carl is backing up. And he's going to be in a pretty pickle. Cough wants to pursue as well. There's an easy ACU kill here if they want it, if they're prepared to push. The pony is certainly sticking in with that, pinging furiously now to stick to the plan. Carl down into the red, 2,000 HP and falling, backing up as fast as he can. I doubt he's going to be able to get away. It's going to come down to how many HP the pony loses in this. That's the only problem. And a little bit of micro there saves him for a moment, but bang, down he goes into pony. Drops down to 1400 HP with that Commander Blast. He needs to get his big metal backside out of dodge, lest he gets overwhelmed by some other opponent. Down here we have got Brammel, who could have made his way into the mix there, potentially to snag the pony had he been in the area. And that explosion also would have taken Koff down as well. But uh, alas for Team 1 and alas for Carl, he had very little support there. And Belisarius is forced to retreat back to his side of the map. Nice early pickup there for Team 2. Another upgrade going down on the pony as well. Wants to get probably some more HP on that ACU immediately. It's never a nice thing to be in the middle of the map on less than 2,000 HP. It's a rather uncomfortable feeling. But this is firmly in Team 2's hands now, the center of the map to take a look at what's been going on elsewhere. Root now filing out left with some of his troops. He's got his ACU reasonably far forward and to the left-hand side as well. The pony has grabbed a couple of the, or a mass point to the left out here and does have one engineer up to the top left on a reclaim mission. But that mech is going to fall. And now a couple of factories online over on the right-hand side for Bramel as well potentially be a nasty little production facility that Team 2 will have to take care of. That's very far forward indeed. It's also getting reasonable clumps of spam together. And it's all well and good grabbing the middle with authority. But if all of your power in terms of ACU power, build power, destructive power is clumped in the middle of the map, your flanks are instinctively and intrinsically vulnerable. It's very easy for these guys to get around it. And that is why we're starting to see some of these guys pushing around the edges. Root has his uh, ACU placed ideally to deal with a couple of these alien... <laughs> I should say alien. I suppose they kind of are aliens to a certain extent, as far as the Cybrans are concerned. Aeon units are concerned. But uh, yeah, they're not going to push forward there from Fieldos. Root's going to stick there, grab as many of these rocks as possible. I'll be interested to see how these guys are matching up on Reclaim. 3,400 for Deponi, 4,900 for Root, 5,000 now. Bramble 4,500, Fieldos 3,700, Koff 2,700, Johnny 2,000, and Belisarius 800. So the big winners here, Root and the Pony. Was that Bramble as well? And Bramble as well, and the main head honchos. So Team 1 actually doing better, I guess, in terms of reclaim. Of course, missing that early uh, player, losing Carl in under five minutes. Very painful indeed. Fieldos now pushing hard with some of his T1. Got a bunch of Auroras in the mix down here. Some Thistles to guard against any potential air attack. We are seeing some air units on the field, although not currently any kind of air to ground power. It's mostly interceptors. And now we've got Team 2 pushing quite hard on the left-hand side. The Pony and Fieldos combination of FAMs and Aurora is pushing up the left-hand side. Root's coming into counter with his ACU, and he's also got a whole bunch of Mantis up here at the top. I think he's going to be able to beat this back without any real danger, as well as this push in the middle from Fieldos as well. Belisarius is ready with his ACU. He's pulling his main body of troops back. Doesn't need to get those involved and snag those very comfortably with the ACU. Meanwhile, a large engagement kicking off down here at the bottom between Bramel and Koff, and a couple of units in there as well from Johnny C321 and uh, looking for the moment on the face of it like Bramel has the others in retreat I'm going to push too hard though lines and lines of wall sections going down for Johnny wants to cut off 
this section of the map. I think he's going to be a tall order. That's been spotted. In comes Bramall. That engineer is down and not going to be able to complete his build mission. More Mantis pouring out all the time from Root, heading to the left-hand side of the map. If he could break through now, down here, there's a lot of build capacity and whatnot for Dupony going around on reclaim machines. Look how bald this area of the map is. They have scooped up absolutely everything. Looks very similar to the top of my head. It's not a pretty sight at all, let me tell you. Meanwhile, all of this uh, movement for Team 2 seems to be towards the right. They've identified that Bramble is quite far forward with his ACU, and there's a nasty manufacturing facility being bolstered by streams of units from the main base back here, so they want to try and counteract that. They've expended a lot of mass and energy locking down the center of the map, which does get you a couple of extra mass points, but uh, doesn't help with... Uh, fanning stuff out. Root has made the transition to T2 up here. We can see some rhinos in the mix. He's also got the uh, pretty nasty amount of units on that left-hand side. He's got sort of free reign to head down should he decide to attack. Pony's going to have to look into that. Doesn't want to lose that left flank if at all possible. Some Cerberus turrets going down as well. It's a good thing they've got that upgraded gun on that commander that helps while these PD get placed one oblivion turret has been completed for Fieldos and that's going to shoo away those forces from Bramall meanwhile on the left hand side Root is indeed making a little bit of a push Boney's going to have to withdraw some of his troops to defend prevent this uh, from turning into a nasty little run by to get into the back of their main bases that would definitely not be ideal. Some swift fins on the field as well. T2 fighter craft for Aeon flying around for Fieldos there. That uh, might go some way to grabbing the skies. None of these guys committing to any big air to ground play in any way, shape, or form. Lots of interceptors out though for Root. Couple of swift winds. Not going to be a match for that. It's not initially. And uh, the pony seems to be a little bit outnumbered over here on the left hand side. Root having pretty good success. They probably managed to take down this factory. Still really good numbers in this mix here for Root. I see he can get those rhinos into play as well. Now we're getting some air to ground play. The ponies produced a bunch of T1 bombers to help deal with this spam. A couple of interceptors roaming around for Root to defend against it. And over here, Bramble making a push with his commander, preventing that uh, PD from locking down this channel and uh, could potentially make a nice little push here. It looked like he had the gun upgrade there as well with the rate of fire there. So he's managed to get that. Indeed he has. And that's going to make that little side all the more dangerous there for Team 2. In now comes Belisarius and Root. They have numbers on this side of the map and Fieldos does have some T2 engineers in play. He's trying to get down some point defense, but there's just he hasn't put those down or placed those with enough time to spare. They're not going to get finished. That engineer is going to be destroyed. And Belisarius is actually penetrating the outer walls of Vildos's defense. He's moving in now. And he's got some Zooies in the mix now. So bad times on the ground here for Fieldos. Those specters couldn't be arriving in a more timely fashion however immediately they get shot down by the air coverage from root i'm gonna have to go to split screen here because exactly the same time there is a little attack happening on the right hand side between cough and brannell cough now forcing brammel back and brammel very low on hp he's down to around 1600 hit points or so on his commander probably bit off more than he can chew there and that is why cough is pushing so hard he's been enticed by that commander on such low energy and now a little bit of a move as well around the right hand side from Johnny that's a lot of units on the ground and Root now pushing in with some of his mantis on the left screen here gonna take down that T2 power plant that is not something that Fieldos wants to lose in fact both of them go down and that is really quite painful Fieldos has come back over here with his commander he's working on some T2 PDs and now it is Bramble's turn 
to push a little bit harder. Don't know whether he got a big clump of veterancy there, but he's more comfortably up into the yellow. And Kopp is advancing now with his commander. Pushing quite hard with his Mantis, forcing Bramble back. He's got to be careful. He's down to around 4,500 HP, Bramble. Meanwhile, it's absolute carnage over on the left-hand side. It looks like that area has finally been pacified. And Team 2 have a handle on the situation. There are some rhinos over here. They decided not to go in and engage with the rest of the body of the troop. But that was a nice little push there from Team 1. It goes some way to alleviating the pressure from losing their man Carl in the first five minutes of this game. But nice run by happening here over on the right-hand side from Johnny. Potentially could cause a lot of damage if you can get right up around the back. Maybe take out these factories or even worse, get right into the back here and hit some of this power or mass go down and shut down Bramble once and for all and Bramble of course very far forward could be isolated we've got a Spectre out from Fieldos going straight after Bramble's ACU but there's far too much T1 mobile anti-air in the area for him to hope of uh, or to stand any hope of grabbing that ACU kill now Bramble is going to walk forward and start to deal with some of these Auroras in a fashion with which he has become accustomed to his ACU gun upgrade, go in there and kill everything. Does he have access to overcharge? No, he doesn't. 15 minutes in, still no energy storage. And he needs to be careful here. He's down to around 1,500 HP, and there's a lot of Auroras on the field. Some of the shots are getting blocked by the cliff, down to around 800 HP. He's backing away. Some of them are coming around the back as well. He is still sitting on around 800 HP. Now is the time to get veterancy if you can, but it's not going to work. And down he goes, so Team 1 lose yet another player at minute 15. And are down to just two. It is up to Root and it is up to Belisarius. And we've got a bug that's gone down here over on the left for Root. If you can get that up, that could be a game changer. If you can get in there and cause some kind of catastrophic damage, then uh, it might not be all over. But you've got to think this isn't looking great now for Team 1. They've lost two members. Team 2 looking very strong. They hold the middle. That is a nice fire base. And it's not got anything in the area. Team 1 hasn't got anything in the area that looks like it stands any chance of breaking that down in the near future. Belisarius is back here with his com. He looks quite uh, tanky and tooled up there, sitting on 14,500 HP. But uh, there's not even a great deal of units on the map. And there's not going to be a great deal of units as well, especially while all of the mass and energy will be going into getting the eco together to powerhouse this Soul Ripper. However, we do have T3 on the field, of course. So the only way we would have got that uh, Soul Ripper in play. And we're starting to see loyalists on the field. And that might go some way to deal with this spam that they're going to be facing in the near future. You can see units massing over on the left-hand side there for Team 2. And it's... All of them, basically. cough has got a decent amount. I don't really know why cough isn't pushing up the right-hand side. But it is actually a good thing that he isn't. Look at the amount of loyalists on the field over to the right here from Root. That would absolutely massacre all that T1. There are some T2 units on the field. Some hoplites there for cough Goff is going to try and focus on locking down this passage. I don't think that's really what he needs to be doing. He needs to be focusing on attacking. They've lost two two bunches uh, or two members of their team now team one and uh, they've got a gaping hole in the side of their defenses and if he can get past these loyalists he can get up there with his commander and overcharge these loyalists of course he didn't know they were there until now but there's nothing to stop these units going right the way and in fact he might as well just run by with those units that could be a problem for team one you know uh, as we speak Aurora is taking down one of the loyalists there See the EMP blast going off on death, potentially disabling all those units. Here comes another loyalist. We'll start working on it. Just needs a few more numbers to deal with them. And the fact that all of these loyalists are clumped over here down at the bottom could be quite negative for Team 1. Let's keep an eye on these two conflict zones. We've got some pinging going down. He makes bugs, so Deponi has spotted the Soul Ripper. And that Soul Ripper has 65,000 HP on it. So that is nearly done and promptly going into the green. And remember, this is not on plus speed. This is in real time that we are watching this. We've got some bombers coming in now from Deponi. Those loyalists are finished over here. Nothing came of that attack. And this spam 
is now pushing in from all directions from Team 2. They know they need to kill this before it goes online. I think all the mass that Root had been stockpiling has been used up. The Pony going in wants to try and kill that T3 power plant. Remember, not only will they lose the power, but the collateral damage from that explosion will wipe out most of the build capacity in this surrounding area and might stop this Soul Ripper from being finished. There's a lot of T1 in the area. The team 2 need to focus all this T1 on that power plant. Someone is pinging it. It needs to die. But for the moment, for some reason, they're focusing on that T3 factory. That's definitely a mistake. And that Soul Ripper is so nearly completed now. Just 5,000 HP or so to go, depending on how much damage it has accrued. Belisarius has some of his own T1 in the area. He's coming with his ACU as well now. And I think they are just a little too late. Soul Ripper online. And now Team 2 are suddenly in trouble. I don't know if they've got anything that's going to be able to deal with this on the field. I haven't seen anything at the moment. Suddenly all this T1 scattering all, all directions. It's like the invasion just turned sour. They've got some unbelievable super weapon that is going to just ruin your day just when you thought you had everything sorted and Deponi control K's all of his T1 there. Nice maneuver. You don't want that Soul Ripper getting any more veterancy than is uh, at all necessary. And the interceptors that were on the ground already for Belisarius on the map have been assigned protection detail to follow that in. Going to try and keep that undercover as quickly or as best he can. And we're seeing some shield gens going down in the base for Fieldos. There's not a lot of build capacity to do anything in Deponi's base at the moment. And this is a really sticky situation now for Team 2. We do have a few T1 units over on the right-hand side there for Koff. But this bug, there is nothing really on the ground to deal with it. There hasn't been a lot of airplay in this game, so don't expect there to be too much static anti-air on the field. Up to 76 kills already. Shield gen down, another shield gen down. And now Fieldos' commander is totally exposed. Two T2 power gens down. And I think now that Soul Ripper is probably going to focus on the commander. It's down to around 70,000 HP. But of course, the longer this goes on, the fewer aircraft are going to be in the air for Team 2. We have got swift wins for both Johnny and Fieldos, but it didn't matter. Down goes Fieldos. Ejected at minute 21 by that bug, and I can't see a damn thing, but I'm pretty sure that bug is still pretty healthy. Yes, he is. 135 kills and going strong, still with the best part of two-thirds of the HP. We have got some Myrmidons down there, some Cybrid Sams, but he's come right over to the right-hand side. Koff is next for the guillotine. What's he going to do? I just don't know. This is going to be a tough one if ever I see. Where are the other ACUs in this mix? Can't see. Uh, so Johnny C321 is down here. Deponi is down here. But he's moving his commander. And he's a pretty tooled up commander. He's got to try and keep it safe from this bug. who's just claimed another scalp. Cough goes down. Deponi's on the move. Let's see if I can find the move order. It looks like he's coming up here to the top left. Perhaps some kind of stealth base, but they still need to work out a way to deal with this bug who's still looking even healthier than the last time we saw him. 178 kills, very high rank on veterancy. Johnny needs to get his Aeon butt out of there. Uh, where is that commander? He's coming up here to the top left. This is going to be crucial. Scout planes over the middle base there from Deponi. He's changed direction. And we're going to see a comm drop now into the back of the base. He's identified Root's ACU. If he can kill Root's ACU, of course, that bug will go pop. Another bug under construction. So it's vitally important that this succeed or he is in real trouble. That bug couldn't look more healthy. Johnny is on the run. And in comes Deponi's ACU. This is going to be absolutely crucial. Deponi now going after Root in a big way. We're going to go to split screen to try and keep tabs on what's happening with the bug. The bug has spotted Johnny's ACU, but of course it's unlikely to be having too much micro going on now as Root is under threat. And TAC missiles coming off the top of Deponi's commander as well. A beautiful shot there landing right on top of Root's head, leading the target. And down he goes. The question is, 
Will that bug scalp Johnny before he goes pop? No, it won't. It's been directed over to the left-hand side, and that is the last command it will have gotten. That bug is going to go down before doing any more damage, and suddenly, once again, Team 1 are in a very bad position, and look at that. Over three quarters done on that bug as well. Belisarius now has to contend with the pony at the back of his base. Pop goes all of root stuff. And radar system being placed. T1 point defense being placed. A little bit of a ping going down there. And there's nothing really on the field. Belisarius has a lot of units. He's got some Othums up there at the front. Some T3 siege tanks. He's going to wish he had them in the area. He's actually pushing on towards the main base. He needs to bring all of that back, to be honest. If he can scalp the pony, he can take this game. But he needs everything to do that. I'm not sure if he's got anything that he's going to be able to manage to do that. I don't think he's got the units on the field. He started work on an Ithoto, a chicken down here. He hasn't got a lot of build capacity. And now the new Othams that are rolling off the conveyor belt are being assigned protection duty up here at the back but the pony's busy making new factories and look how high that tap missile goes from the commander where is it headed looks like it might be going after oh wow it's going after the commander oh oh man half hp gone down to 6500 hit points a shield generator placed Belisarius moving around. Second attack missile coming in. Looks like it's going for the power plant. Yet more collateral damage there from that power plant. Belisarius down to 7,400 HP. I can't believe this turnaround. To Pony, you sick, sick man. Haven't seen much play like this since the days of TLO. Another attack missile coming in. Belisarius needs to get moving. He's going to take it in the face again. 1,800 hit points. And people might be wondering why he's not moving. It is so difficult to keep your spam moving to keep attack orders going and he is attacking down here at the bottom remember he's going after Johnny's main base but Belisarius down to 2,300 hit points he needs to watch out for those tack missiles though they will be his undoing he needs to produce more tack missile defense there is one over here to the left hand side Come in at such an angle. I don't want to miss it. It looks like there's another one coming in. He spotted it. He's on the move. Oh, but the AOE grabs him. And the pony takes the game for Team 2. Just as Johnny was getting into trouble. Beautiful com drop at the back. I love that. I love that. More of that, please, from everyone. And your games will be casted. I guarantee it. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. As always, more to come in the immediate future, and not just the immediate future. We're going to have another one today, as and when I decide what we're going to do. In the meantime, as always, stay well and stay safe, guys. This is Guile, signing out.